Hi guys, Heron82 here. Today I have the great privilege of sharing with you my first looks and flights of Heat Blur Simulation's F14B Tomcat. Now as we're all well aware by now, Heat Blur don't exactly mess around when it comes to texture quality or model quality, and the F14 is no exception. In fact, if anything, they've raised the bar even further, down to the fine dings and dents across the nose of the bird to the rivet indentations. Just exquisite modelling. I'm not going to go into it too greatly because we all know what a tomcat looks like, but today we're just going to have a quick browse through the inside of the bird, a look around the cockpit and where things are situated, and then we'll go out on a mission. So, before we get too carried away with dribbling over this thing, let's jump into the pit and have a look. So, as you can see, the high level of detail to the modelling and textures continues inside the cockpit. The grind, the dirt on the screens, the scratches, the pen marks on the metalwork, all painstakingly modelled to a high level. I keep finding myself looking at a few things just because of the fact that they just look so real. That screen, for example. The ribbons and the straps on this seat. Just insane. Surprisingly, though, with all this detail and quality in here, you don't actually get much of a performance hit, if anything. So it's a bit of a sigh of relief for most of us guys. As well as the modelling and the details and textures, Heaplow have done their usual cracking job with sounds as well. Let's have a listen to a few of the Tomcat's unique ones. Now what we're going to do is I'm just going to jump back into the pit of the Tomcat and I'll take you through a quick familiarisation of where things are, just to get you started. Let's get in there. Okay guys, so here we are in the pilot's pit of the F-14. As I said, I'm just going to give you a quick overview left to right of where things are laid out. Nothing too in-depth. We'll start down here on the left-hand panel. Okay, so hiding behind this hose, we've got our oxygen switch. And then you've got your TACAN panel and your UHF radio. Interestingly, this tab here is dynamic, so you can set your frequencies in the mission editor and they'll be displayed on here. On the outer wall, we've got our volume panel. So this is for your RWR, Sidewinders and TACAN. Then you have the uh, ICS panel. Got your hot mic switch here for speaking to Jester. AFCS panel containing your autopilot controls as well as the SAS controls, pitch, roll and yaw. Asymmetric limiter is hiding over here. Next to that we've got engine mode selector for left and right engines, primary and secondary. Air start switch is boarded in white, nice and easy to find if you need it, next to the rudder trim. Got some throttle quadrant controls here including the auto throttle quite handy for landings. Left and right engine crank and the left and right inlet ramps should you need them. Obviously the throttle quadrant itself, manual wing sweep lever as well as your flaps. Moving up the left vertical we've got our fuel panel. It does contain an indicator here for trim and your spoilers. But you've got your anti-squid, your master reset button, Parking brake just here, got your fuel probe lever just there, or your fuel probe switch. Moving up, you've got your landing gear panel, so you obviously your master landing gear, your override, and your nose strut, the main ones. Emergency storage jettison, and another control service indicator. This one's telling us about slats and flaps, and your landing gear, and your speed brake. 
left knee panel here does have some engine instrumentation on it. We've got our hydraulic pressure for left and right, oil pressure for left and right, and nozzle percentage left and right. RPM gauge left and right. Turbine intake temperature left and right. This will change though for the B, it will become the EGT. And then you've got the fuel flow left and right. Standard gauges up here, we've got our radar altimeter, server pneumatic altimeter, indicated airspeed. Obviously the Tomcats one works slightly differently to what we're used to. It counts up in knots, but at 200 it changes to mark. But the knots will be displayed in this little window here as it rotates around the barrel. Up front and centre we've got our ACM panel, AOA indicator on the left, wing sweep indicator on the right. This one tells you where the wings are, where they should be and what mode they're in. ACM panel itself, you've got your master arm, missile mode, missile prep, side run recording and gun rate. The gun's got two rates, so it's got a slow rate of 4,000 rounds per minute, which is mainly for air to ground, and your fast rate of 6,000 rounds, which is air to air. Got your stations indicators just here, telling us if we've got something loaded on our stations, as well as your slip slide indicator. Coming down the middle, we've got our VDI screen, surrounded by caution lights, as well as the left and right engine fire indicators. And then you've got your HSD screen just below. Down the right side then, got our remote indicators for our UHF, so this will tell you your channels or your frequencies that you're dialed into. Compass, RWR, fuel quantity for left and right, clock, hook controls as well as your gun rounds indicator here, displays panel on the right vertical, quite important one this one, you will use this a lot, manages your HUD modes as well as your VDI and HSD modes, obviously power switches here for each display and your steering command choices, so setting how you want to be navigated. Hiding just beneath that, we've got our elevation for our gun. Finally, coming down the right-hand console, we've got our spoiler override. If we get any damage or lose some spoilers, we can override the functions. Caution light panel, quite a big one, lots to go wrong. Generator panel, air panel, so your air sources as well as the internal air conditioning for the cabin. External environments, so your anti-ice for engine and probe, as well as the windshield. And down the outer wall we've got our compass panel, ILS panel, lighting panel, so internal lighting, external lighting, taxi lights, etc. Master test switch is just here, you'll need this during some startup procedures. Emergency flight hydraulics switch under this cover. And then you've got the uh, HUD video, this isn't implemented yet. And hiding away down in this corner is actually the uh, hydraulic transfer switch. So you will need that during startup. So that's about it for the pilot's pit. Just a quick overview. What we're going to do now is jump into a fresh bird and try and complete a mission. Catch you in a minute. Okay, so here we are back in the F-14. Hot start. Just going to turn on some lighting, do a bit of colour in the cockpit. And then we're just going to head off to Cat 1. There's all steering engaged. Indicated lights up up here. Let's get up there. Those all steering is very good in the Tomcat. Kind of acts uh, like it's constantly in high gain. So just be wary of that if you've got any sudden movements. It might tip the bird over. All right, squeeze in here. We don't hit that cat. Okay, looking good. Just come forward a bit. Perfect. Right, first off, we're going to kneel the bird. This will drop the launch bar. And then, in the usual fashion, we'll press U to get hooked up. Blast deflectors are up. So the first thing we're going to want to do then is get the wings out. So lift and move the lever all the way forward. Put it back down. Close the cover. Here come the wings. 
press the master reset button. And I'm just going to quickly test the travel. Make sure they move freely. Looks good all the way back. Bomb mode. And back to auto. Next up, and drop flats. Flaps and slats are down. Obviously you can't use the flaps when the wings are swept. I'm just going to pop the TLC and make sure that's working. Because we will need that later on if we get home okay. Alright, let's just wipe the control surfaces. Looks good. Gonna check trim. Looks good. Right, so ready to go. We're going to go up to meal power. You're not meant to do an afterburner launch with the Tomcat because the uh, if you lose an engine during launch the yaw effect is just a bit too much and it won't be recoverable basically. You'll end up in the drink. So meal power it is. Give the salute. Away we go. Yeah, coming up. Uh, okay, there's a bogey, two two zero, one mile. Good launch, flaps up into burner. Let's set the HUD to cruise mode. And we're gonna come right to waypoint one. Waypoint's indicated here with this carrot on the outside of the rows. So we'll get that lined up. Dirt, one o'clock. SA three. Get the birds set up for action. So the first thing I'm going to do is bring up Jester's menu. Go to air to ground. I'm going to choose my ordnance. That's Wilco. I'm going to go back to air to ground and I'm going to set them as pairs. We'll go. One more time, actually, two more times. I need to set my ripple quantity. I'm going to choose 10. We'll go. Got six bombs, so that will drop all of them in one. And then I need to go back in and just set my timing. We'll go. That's set up. So the bombs are ready. We'll go to air to ground mode. Turn on master arm. I'll just get the missiles active and preparing. There we go, we've got our seasick line. Next up, going to set up defences. So, back to Jester. CMS menu. CMS mode. Auto chaff. Back in, I'm going to ask uh, for flares to be managed by myself. Welcome. Finally, I just need to set a program for my chaff. Welcome. Cool, so we've got the bombs ready, we've got defensive ready. The last thing I want to do really is set a waypoint up for the convoy. Um, what we can do is we can put a mark on the F10 map, which Jester can basically import into the computer, and it becomes a waypoint we can use for navigation. So we're going to go F10. Okay, there's the convoy. We're going to put a marker down about here, I reckon, by the time we get to them. Call it convoy. And back to the pit. Now we'll get our jester menu up. Navigation utility. Steer point from map. Surface target. And convoy. Welcome. If we set the HSD to TID, can see and hear just uh, putting in the coordinates. Pretty cool. Let's set that back to the uh, HSD. Seven miles, six miles to waypoint one. probably do actually now that he's programmed in that waypoint for the convoy is we'll move him on to waypoint two. Uh, so we've got the menu, navigation utility, destination steer point, waypoint two.
Got it. Switching to two point two. Okay. Coming right. See how we head out there. A bit beaten up. Hopefully we get some revenge for them shortly. Ten miles on waypoint two. So what we'll do is we'll set the waypoint to our surface target in a minute. Mud bike, eleven o'clock. SA three. Sam's on to us. Going to go air to ground mode. Singer, eleven o'clock. SA three. Selected my uh, decoys. So as soon as they're ready, I'm going to drop them. And we're going to go defensive. Planes dropping chaff. Here we go again. Missile, two o'clock low. Hot. Break left. Looks like he lost me. Let's see if we can drive this one down. Decoys didn't do us any favours. Looks like we've defeated them though. That'll do. Unless that one hit the decoy. Right, while we're down here, we're going to change our waypoint to our surface target. Welcome. Switching to surface target. It's just off to our one o'clock here, so I'm going to push away from this SAM site. I do apologise for the frame drop. Sunning on the map is killing me. Ten miles on the target. Change my ordnance back to my bombs. Welcome. Get some altitude back. I think we're good on that SAM. Eight miles, need to figure out where this convoy is. I think that's the road down there. So we're going to set VDI to TV. And we're going to try and use it to spot the convoy. No visual on them from up here, so we can turn in. run the camera up the road. See if we get an idea where these guys are hiding. There they are. Just near that dark patch. Looks like they're driving towards us, so we're gonna go around the back. Mud bike, twelve o'clock. SA thirteen and um, a singer, six o'clock. SA three and a singer. Whoa, okay they got IR protection down there so Sam, 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 seven o'clock. Let's get away. They were a lot closer than I thought they were. Going to try and wrap around the back of them. It's a good thing I had them flares mapped to my control. There they are, so I might get back to them just before they get to the roundabout. Let's grab some altitude and drop down. There they are. Alright, here we go. Got lined up. to get a bit of a nice dive on them and wait for the uh, drop cross to come up. Bombs away, let's break off. Singer, 10 o'clock. SA-3, and a Singer, 1 o'clock. SA-13... Oh, lots of fire down there. I think we might have hit our target. Nice, got a good bunch of them. I'd say that's a success. Heavy damage to that convoy. Let's get the hell out of here. 
set our steer point to waypoint three. Welcome. Switching to steer point three. Let's get back to the carrier. Nailed. Ten o'clock. Meg twenty-five. And a singer, 5 o'clock. SA3. Okay, we've got some bandits turned up. Let's get the Phoenixes selected and see if Jester can catch any of these guys. Cannot comply. Not yet. There's a bogey, 205, 25 miles. Angels, 18. Bike, 11 o'clock. MiG, 25. Welcome. He's got one. Got him locked. Target, 22 miles. Bike, 12 o'clock. Fox fast. All right, so 20 miles. We're going to send the Phoenix out. Bike, one away. Fox fast. He's launched on me. We're going to go defensive. That's a fox bat. Tucker time. Missile. Two o'clock. Hot. Break left. Spike. Two o'clock. Big twenty-five. And he's dropped his lock on me, trying to defend from that phoenix. There is another one out there, so I need to be careful. Flash. One down. Wilco. All right, switching to PSTT. Need to find the next guy. Wilco. We've got a bogey. Two zero zero, ten miles. Angel thirteen. Wilco. I've got a lock. Oh, he's locked up the same guy. Where's the other guy gone? Target five miles. That guy's out of the picture, I need to find the second one. Bogey, MiG-25, 11 o'clock, 4 miles. 12 o'clock. There he is. 12 o'clock. Flash! Whoa, that was close. I lost lock. I think he's out. High. I think they're both done. He's on our 12. Ain't gonna get better than that. Let's just knock him out of the sky. Maybe he's damaged cruising home. Alright, we're done. Let's get to the carrier. Mud spike. 12 o'clock. Flash! Okay, I'm going to tell Jester to set up for home base. Welcome. Switch it to home base. Three o'clock. Singer. Two o'clock. Three o'clock. Pretty sure that's our carrier group. I guess they're firing on that downed MiG, but we'll hit the deck for now. Eight o'clock. Okay, so we're coming up on the carrier just now. I'm going to set my HUD to landing and drop my tail hook. So you can see the HUD's changed up. We've got some more information now. We've got our VVT, we've got our E bracket, 1200 foot of altitude, and our sink and climb. So I'm currently sitting at about 700 foot. I need to stay around this point to be fair. Try for a case one, but no promises. Deck's clear.
keep everything under control. It's a very analog bird, so you don't get the assistance that you get in the uh, FA-18 or the SU-33. Constantly trimming. Right, we're in the brake. I'm going to try and keep this altitude. I've actually dropped down a bit too soon. I'm going to drop my gear though. down and drop flaps. Okay, let's start trimming and try and get the AOA in place. So I've just dropped or popped up my DLC, you can see it in the mirror there. We use that to try and help me get this uh, e-bracket in place. Let's trim up a bit. Just need to watch my speed and my sync rate. Okay, I'm a bit far from the boat. Most of the stuff going on here is just about under control. <laughs> okay. Fifteen units of airways in place. That's pretty good. We're at 400 feet. Still turning onto the back of the boat. Hopefully we can get a good line and all will be well. Climbing. Don't want to be climbing. And this is where it starts to get ropey. See. I'll try for it anyway. A little low. Oh, that was rope as hell. Nailed that three wire. Three wire though. I'll take that. God, it is a handful. It is so much of a handful compared to what the Hornet is. Um, but yeah, we made it. There you go, guys. That is my look and flights of uh, Heat Blur Simulations F14. And uh, yeah, it's awesome. Really cool. Let's get the nose steer on and go and park up. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, this thing's cracking. Obviously, we've not touched anything of the Rio stuff yet. Um, it's not really out just yet, and I've not really looked too much into it, but that is going to be quite a handful. Pretty much someone else's day job. Alright guys, I've been Heroin82. Thanks for watching. Fly safe, I'll catch you in the next one.